Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's video, doing Jamie Friday, as always on a Friday we're going to have a look at the weather, next month this takes us into April, uh, can you believe we're going into the uh, first uh, week of the new month, uh, the second month of spring, so um, I'll get on with that in a second, we'll have a look at the JMA and the CFS B2 models, see what they're showing for the next month, uh, see if there's any um, any agreement between the two models in terms of what may be ahead. But before you get on with that, just very quickly say about the ads that go so this video ads are most paid so you own and content when you watch them, they close back up again. It is helping to pay for our website. Thanks very much for doing that. We'll start off with the JMA and then we'll move on to the CFS V2. So we're going to start off with the 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into weekly peers from the JMA. The first week peer will take us from the week that we are currently starting, the 10th through to the 17th of March. Uh, blue is extrapolating to um, low pressure and yellow, orange, red, bright colours extrapolates to high pressure. So for the coming week, we find that we've got quite a lot of high pressure around the country, actually. It's down to the southwest and also through and to the east of us. There is low pressure in the Atlantic, but I think overall, a lot of dry weather coming up with that. And fairly pleasant mild conditions as well, because we are on the mild side of the jet stream. So really quite a decent week to be starting off with a lot of useful dry weather. There will be influences from the Atlantic at times, but a lot of uh, useful dry weather and temperatures generally on the warmest side as well. We go through to week two, which is the 17th through 24th of March. Quite a big change taking place then. The ridge is pulling out into the central Atlantic and also going up towards uh, Western Russia or going back to Western Russia and we're bringing in low pressure through the country. It looks like the jet stream is coming southwards as well. So that looks a lot more unsettled and also looks quite a lot cooler as well. I wouldn't necessarily say it's cold because the air is still generally influenced from the Atlantic, but probably from a, from a, from a more northerly source in the Atlantic. So it's cooler and it's more unsettled there as we're going through the, 20, uh, going through the 17th. To the 24th of March. And then we go through to weeks 3 and 4, which is 24th of March due to the 7th of April. And this looks quite uh, poor as well. We've got this trough of low pressure through many central western parts of uh, Europe. It looks odd looking sharp, really. Low pressure is also up, the nor up to the north up here. Uh, but I think the main thing for us is that we're on the cool side of a jet stream there with that trough and probably bringing the air in from the east or even the northeast as we go through to the end of March and into the early part of April. So to be honest, it doesn't look all that great actually. Let's get this week out of the way, which does look quite decent. The last stages of March going into early April look a lot more unsettled and a lot cooler uh, on this morning's JMA update. Let's see how all this play, uh, plays out with the temperature and precipitation anomalies. So uh, that was the Northern Hemisphere view from the pole down. This is the tropical and mid-latitude view. The British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. Starting again with week one, the 10th through to the 17th of uh, March. This one shows a lot of ridging through uh, the Atlantic into the UK and also going to the east of the UK as well. So you expect this one to have a lot of dry weather. That's what the model suggests. It does suggest a little bit of rain in the far northwest of the country, but most parts of the country are coming out with a dry of an average week in the week. Age. And it's also expected to be quite warm, and that's what the model is doing as well, with temperature anomalies significantly milder than average. So mild and uh, dry and quite warm, perhaps, at times through the coming week. But uh, week two, which is the 17th to 24th of March, looks a lot more unsettled with low pressure uh, coming through the country. And it looked like we was going on to the cold side of the jet stream as well. So you'd certainly expect this to be a lot more unsettled. That's what the model suggests with precipitation anomalies going above average. More rainfall coming through there and cooler. We are going on to the cool side of the jet. So uh, temperatures are lowering. They aren't cold. We're only going down towards sort of average average temperatures uh, really but it's certainly quite a significant reduction in temperature compared to what we have in uh, week one and then moving through to weeks three and four we find that the trough is again around the UK and also many central parts of Europe as well look like we're beyond the cool side 
of the jet stream with that. So precipitation anomalies for that two weekly period are coming up. Most of us wet and average. Scotland closer to normal elsewhere. Uh, wet of an average, implying that the wettest conditions will be to the south, the driest to the north, and that will probably favour winds more from an easterly direction for the end of uh, the month and in start of April. Temperature anomalies, nothing to get excited about there. Still not really cold of an average, but certainly much closer to average, and quite a bit cooler compared to what we have in the week ahead and what we've had through March so far. So it looks like we're going to have quite a warmish, dryish week for the uh, next week. And then we turn a good deal more on a and cooler for the latter stages of March into early April. On this morning's JMA, anyway. What about CFSB2? Well, again, these are 500 mm of our heights broken down into week periods. The first week period taking us from the 10th through to the 16th of March. Uh, so for the coming week, we find that we've got a lot of anti-cyclonic influences through the country and also extending from the Atlantic to our east. We're on the mild side of the jet stream. So the north and west particularly could be impacted by the jet a little bit, have some rain. But generally, it is quite a warm, dry week coming up by the look of that. However, we go through to week two and very similar to what the JMA is doing from the 17th to the 23rd of March. It looks a lot more unsettled. The ridge is pulling back into the central part of the Atlantic. We've got this trough of low pressure to our northwest and bring the jet stream through as well. So it looks like we're getting to the second half of March and it turns cooler and more unsettled. Agreement with both of these models to do that. Uh, and then we go through to week three, and this shows a change to what the JMA is doing there, because um, the JMA wants to keep those cooler and settled conditions going through to the end of March and the start of April. But the CFS is seeing that the ridge very quickly comes back. So from the 24th through to the 30th of March, we find high pressure strengthening, or above average height, but it's high pressure really, strengthening to our south and the east. That trough is being pushed back up towards Greenland and Iceland. And the flow of the jet stream is going like that. So after a more unsettled cooler interruption, looks like we end March on a very mild and probably even quite warm and dry note once again. And then we go through to the start of April, which is um, week four, 31st of March through to the 6th of April. And just lots of anti-cyclonic influences there. Um, high pressure through the Atlantic into the UK and into Europe as well. Low pressure is uh, up here across Greenland. And the jet stream is to our north. So we start April probably on quite a warm, dry note as well with CFS V2. So the two models are in, agreements for, are in agreement for week one and week two. But for week, weeks three and four, they are in disagreement this morning. So all this means that the temperature anomaly with CFS V2 for the next uh, week is warmer than average. Quite a warm week coming up. Week 2 is still a little bit warmer than average, but it's uh, a lower anomaly, if you like. It's, it's a reduction in the anomaly compared to week 1. So, uh, yes, temperatures are still above average, but not by as much there from the 17th to the 23rd of March. Uh, and then the warmth comes back, really, for week three, which is 24th to 30th of March. Uh, another very warm week coming up there. And that continues into the start of April. Temperature anomalies are warmer than average from the 31st of March through to the 6th of April. Precipitation looking like this for coming week shows some rain in the north and west. Elsewhere, it's nearer normal to a bit drier. Week two, which looks cooler and more unsettled. Uh, so that one has above average rainfall from the 17th to the 23rd of March. However, it's just a brief interruption because by the time we get through to week three, we've got uh, near normal precipitation anomalies. So we're probably starting to lose the signal with a the model then. Those near normal precipitation anomalies continue into week four, the 31st of March through to the 6th of April. Uh, I suspect if it came off as the model suggests, it would be a drier end to March, drier an average end to March, and start to April. So we've got a bit of disagreement here between the two models. We're we'll way for the next couple of weeks, so it's quite straightforward. Um, starting quite warm and dry. Then there's a more unsettled and cooler interruption around the third week of uh, March, so just our middle part of the month. It does turn a bit more unsettled and cooler. 
And then Viz Jamay wants to extend that into the end of March and continue it into April. The CFS saying no, very quickly we'll find our way back to high pressure and it'll turn warm and dry again. Given the way things have panned out over the past few months, I would tend to side more with the uh, CFS on this actually. We may get a cooler, more unsettling introduction. It won't be cold, but it may turn a bit cooler and more unsettled just after mid-month. But I think overall, still probably keeping quite a lot of anti-cyclonic influences uh, into the second half and the end of the month and the start of April would be my guess. Uh, and consequently, we end March and begin April on a warmer and drier note. That's the way things have played out through the winter. Uh, so any sort of unsettling interruptions through winter have been very brief, and we've always managed to find our way back to high pressure quite quickly. I suspect that probably will continue for the next month. And if that was to continue into the summer, of course, up on a bit of a tangent now, but if that was to continue into the summer, of course, where we keep finding our way back to high pressure, then summer is likely to be quite hot and uh, dry. Uh, but, of course, that's a very long way off, and a lot can happen between now and then. Right, that's all now. Remember, it's all just a snapshot of what models are showing today. These long-range models are prone to chopping and changing, so um, it's not to be relied upon. Snapshot of what they're showing today. They could look very different next week. It's a weekend forecast tomorrow. I think we're going to have a lot of very pleasant weather to uh, predict for that. So come back for that tomorrow. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.